Welcome to a brand new series of videos on the AirHatch podcasting channel. My name is Mitchell and in this video series I'll be covering different types of integrations with Azure AD and ClearPass with Intune, but also using ClearPass with ClearPass Onboard and Azure AD. The reason for this video series is that we get some questions from customers wanting to migrate their on-premise AD to the cloud-hosted Azure Active Directory or customers that only have an Azure Active Directory and want to use Intune for example with that Azure AD. So zooming in into the architecture of Intune, this is really where ClearPass comes along as a network access control partner. ClearPass integrates with Microsoft Intune but also Azure Active Directory and this can be separate from each other. With this integration, we can receive information about the status of the device that logs in into the network, whether it's healthy or not, or whether it's jailbroken. But we can also receive information from the Azure Active Directory of which groups a user belongs to. And that information is something that we can use to base our policies on in ClearPass and ultimately decide whether to allow or deny or give granular access to a particular user or device on the wired or wireless network. When we make these integrations with Intune and Azure AD, there is a major difference between an on-premise and a cloud service. The major difference is that you cannot use a username and password anymore. So you cannot use ePPMSHEP v2 where you exchange the password and uh, exchange the hash between ClearPass and the AD. And this is a good thing by the way, because through a man-in-the-middle attack you can actually extract the password uh, that's being exchanged through a hash. So in the cloud environment you can only use certificates. And this is really, um, so this means that customers need to migrate from passwords to certificates. And the certificate is being exchanged between the device and ClearPass. And ClearPass can then match the CN name, so the common name of the certificate, on an Azure identity, for example. So a username or an email address, that sort of stuff. Optionally, we can also use information of Intune as well, of course. In this video series, I'm first going to configure the integration between Intune and ClearPass and using Intune as an authorization source to determine our ClearPass policies on. In the upcoming videos, I'll be covering the Azure AD integration with ClearPass and also using Intune. Uh, then we're going to automate the stuff. So basically the group policies objects that you would normally make in an AD environment, this is something that you can also make in Intune as well. And in the last video, I'll be making the ClearPass onboard work with Azure AD as well. For this new series of videos, I've created two ClearPass servers and joined them into a cluster. I also installed a web certificate on it, clearpass.stbranch.nl, and I activated the licenses. Now it's time to install the extension for Intune. We'll head over to the ClearPass Policy Manager tab, log in with my credentials, and I'll open a second tab to the Guest Manager of ClearPass. I'll do that because the extensions actually reside in the Guest module. I'll go to Administration and then Extensions, and over here, if I click on the install extension, I can search for Intune. And sure enough, here is the Microsoft Intune extension. Please note that you have to have a valid ClearPass subscription key in order to install an extension. So if I click on install, it will ask me to start the extension after installation. I won't do that since we still need to do some configuration before starting it. I'll just click the install button and installation will end in something like five seconds. We'll head over to the configuration and here are some details that we need to replace such as a tenant ID and a client ID and a client secret. These are details that we will get from the re app registration in our Azure portal. So without further ado, I will go to the Microsoft Azure portal and click on Azure Active Directory. Head over to App Registrations, and here I will register a new registration which allows the ClearPass extension to communicate with the Intune API. I will call this App Registration ClearPass Intune Extension and click on Register. You will already see some information that we need to re uh, that we will use to replace, such as the tenant ID. We'll go back to the Manage Extension and fill this information in. I'll need to do that twice for the tenant ID. And the client ID is also listed here, so I'll copy that value and paste it in the field as well. 
Now it's time to create a client secret and we do that under the certificates and secrets. Click on new client secret and let's call it clear pass. The key will expire in two years and again copy the value and paste it over here. Please note that the current password is an asterisk. If we replace it, it will be shown in clear text. If I'm going to save this configuration afterwards, it will be replaced again by asterisk if you would view the configuration again. So now the last step in the app registration is to give the right API permissions to it because the user read in the Microsoft Graph API is not enough. So add a permission for the Intune module. It is an application permission and just tap get device compliance. This is the only information that we will need. Click on add permission and in order to activate this, we need to give our consent. So I'll do that by logging in again and confirming my identity. Click on accept. Sure enough, we have granted access. All right, if I go back to manage extensions, we're pretty much done with the uh, part of the Azure portal. Now it's time to create a local API administrator, which is allowed to communicate with this extension. So I'll head over to the first step that I still had open and go to administration and then admin users. I'll click on add and I'll name this user Intune underscore API. Privilege level, like I said earlier, is API Administrator. We'll add this user and go back to the extension configuration. Paste this value over here. And now we're done with the configuration. I'll click on Restart Extension after updating the configuration, Save Changes. And if I click on show logs, everything is in green. The configuration looks good as well. The passwords are replaced by asterisks. So we're all good for this extension. Now it's time to add an authentication source that will interact with the extension over here. So we'll go to the configuration and then authentication sources. And you have either the option to add an authentication source to interact with the extension by yourself but this will mean that you have to create all the attributes that you want to fetch from uh, the Intune API. Instead, I'm going to go for the second option where I'm going to import an authentication source that Aruba has already provided. We'll go to arubanetworks.com, clear past docs, and this link will redirect you to the technology notes in the Airheads community forum. This post lists different types of integrations and their guides to it. Um, for now, I will only need the Microsoft Intune guide. So we'll download that one. And this guide basically covers what we've been configuring so far. So if I search for GitHub, over here, I'll go to that link. Here's the XML that we want to import. And as you can see, it has all the attributes that, um, that are supported by the API and the extension. So I'm just going to save this particular XML file because we need to do some editing first. I will resize this screen and open up the XML file and zoom in a little bit. We need to replace the access by the IP address of the extension. And the IP address is something that you can find over here. If you go to manage extensions, this is the IP address. So let's fill that in. You don't need to change the username and password since that is not used. So I'll save this XML file and click on the import button. And I'll just drag and drop this XML file. And we get an error message saying that the timeout, uh, timeout must be specified. And the reason for that is that this XML was created for the 6.7 version of ClearPass. In 6.8, you also must specif specify a timeout value. So we'll just do that. The name will be timeout and the value will be like three seconds. Save it again, close it and try to re-import it. And 
And now, sure enough, our authentication source is added. For three seconds, the IP address added, but also the attributes that we will use for our authentication policies. All right, and that's a wrap. This was the first step in order to use Intune as an authorization source. In the next step, we will actually configure the ClearPass policies to use it with Intune. I hope you found this informative and feel free to reach out and ask any questions below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos. Thank you for watching.